City and State TV. I'm Morgan Pechman. Today, our guest is Alex Matheson. He is the president of Blue Marble Project, an environmental consulting firm, and he is the campaign director for Move and Why. Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. It's terrific to be here. Thank you, Morgan. Tell us about the Move and Why plan. Okay, Move New York essentially is a master uh, transportation plan for the New York metropolitan area. So not just New York City, but Long Island and the Hudson Valley as well. And the idea is, is that this is a vitally important system, uh, piece of infrastructure, if you will, or system of infrastructure for the New York City region. It's largely how New York City became the great city that it became and one of the leading uh, financial and, and, and uh, economic engines around the globe. And yet that same system, not just our transit system, but our roads and bridges are increasingly in a state of disrepair and are threatened by uh, basically underfunding, not enough funds to, uh, to invest in the system. And the Move New York plan is kind of built around uh, an idea that um, Sam Schwartz, Gridlock Sam, came up with. I is that correct? And, and what exactly does that plan entail? So the plan in, in its simplest form is essentially a fair tolling plan. The idea is if you simply create a fairer tolling system, a fair system for tolling the region's uh, vehicles, uh, you can unleash a lot of trapped revenue, if you will. Uh, and with that revenue, you can invest back, again, not just in the, in the city's tr uh, transit system, in the region's transit system, but back in its roads and bridges. Some of the problems we've seen with previous attempts to, say, toll these river bridges or congestion pricing, some of these ideas, is that they took 100 cents on every dollar in new tolls paid by the driver, and they put it into mass transit. And that generally is a good formula. Even drivers understand that the better the transit system is, the fewer drivers they have to compete with on roads. But it's not fair to take all that money and put it into mass transit. So Sam's genius essentially is to take, to do two things. One, he does a toll, he proposes a toll swap. So if you're going to toll some of the untold crossings into the most congested part of the city, i.e. the central business district, which we define as 60th Street South, um, then you have to provide some toll relief to those who have been paying for far too long exorbitantly high tolls. So folks in Staten Island, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, who are paying you know, $15 round trip cash tolls uh, on the Verrazano, the Throgs Neck, the Whitestone, the Triborough Bridge, and yet they're not contributing a great deal to, to congestion, uh, and they also uh, don't have a lot of transit options. So the idea is just to simply balance the tolling system, reduce tolls quite dramatically uh, in the outer parts of the city where there are fewer transit options, less congestion, and add tolls or restore tolls in the case of the East River Bridges, all of which were tolled originally, uh, and then create a, fair, a fairer tolling system. The second kind of genius idea, I think, is to give some of that money back to, to drivers. So they, so drivers, uh, in, re in return for this Move New York plan, they get quite a lot. They get much faster commutes into and around the central business district. They get dramatically reduced tolls in the outer parts of the city. And I'm not talking a token 25 or 50 cents. We're talking a half off easy pass, a third off uh, for cash. Uh, and then they get $350 million invested each year in the city's roads and bridges, which is about twice what the DOT from the city and the state currently spend. So real investment in improving our roads and bridges. When uh, Nicole Galinas, our columnist, recently wrote uh, an op-ed actually endorsing your Move NY plan, and she's not in the tank for you, she wrote on her own accord, um, but there was some skepticism from our readers that tolls, they're like, okay, I understand that we can toll the, um, the crossings into Manhattan, but they didn't believe that they would ever that there would be a, a reduction of the tolls, for instance, on the Verrazano Bridge. You know, how is it that that kind of um, equation can work out from a political standpoint? Do you think? Well, I think it's first of all, we Move New York, the coalition behind Move New York would not support a plan that didn't exchange some new tolls around the most congested parts of the city for a significant reduction of tolls in the outer parts of the city. We've actually talked to a number of uh, folks, including Senator Tony Avella, who has been quite a skeptic of this plan uh, to date. Um, and one of the things he said is, you know, I believe that these tolls will go down, but I don't believe necessarily that they won't just go right back up in a year's time. And so what we are proposing to do with his uh, advice and input is to uh, basically lock in the ratio. So whatever the ratio is between the new, newly lowered tolls in the outer parts of the city and the new tolls uh, coming into the CBD, which essentially would match the current tolls into the CBD from the east side, so the Queens Midtown Tunnel and the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, um, you lock in that ratio forevermore. So you couldn't raise one without raising the other, and I think that would do 
quite a lot to make sure that those new, uh, those new ratio, that new ratio of tolls is, is locked in. What is the difference between fair tolling and congestion pricing? Is it just like a, a rebranding with a name that has less toxicity attached to it? You know, I really I don't think so. I mean, certainly there's an element of our plan that's similar to the Bloomberg plan, and that is the idea of tolling these long, free crossings. Uh, but really, it goes much further than that in a couple of ways. One, we provide su substantial toll relief, as I said before. Two, we provide substantial funding to invest in roads and bridges, which is why AAA New York supports this plan, even even though they've opposed every single attempt in the past to toll the East River bridges, including the Bloomberg plan. They even sued Mayor Koch back in 1980 over a similar uh, idea. And we also uh, enjoy the support of the New York Motor Trucking Association and others uh, who really understand the importance of being able to move around the city uh, much more quickly and safely. Uh, another uh, reaction that our readers had had was to invoke um, the Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, mm -hmm. that he was so famously killed um, Mayor Bloomberg's congestion pricing plan. They said, oh, he'll just come in and do the same. Um, have you um, approached the Speaker with your plan? You know, we actually have intentionally not approached the Speaker. We certainly have made our plan known to his office and to some of the folks uh, in, on his team. But we actually disagree with that uh, assessment of why the last uh, plan failed. We think that the failure was in the Bloomberg administration not going around and doing the kind of outreach to the rank and file uh, uh, legislators that they needed to. So Shelley Silver, at the end of the day, I think looked at his conference and decided that he didn't have the support he needed to bring it to a vote. So I don't think that Shelley Silver killed. And my sense from what I've heard is that actually Shelley was philosophically, ideologically uh, supportive of the idea, but just didn't see the support there. We've gone about it very differently. And, you know, listen, and Mayor Bloomberg des deserves terrific credit for trying to get something off the ground. and and uh, and so on uh, and so we've kind of built on in a certain way on, on, on whatever progress was made there and for the 40 years between or, 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 or before that um, but one of the th lessons we learned is it's really important to go out and have conversations with all the elected officials the business groups the labor unions the environmental groups environmental justice groups community groups across the region and particularly to focus on conversations with those folks who opposed past plans to understand why they opposed uh, uh, past plans and what we could do to address it. Now the plan that we've come up with, Sam Schwartz believes very firmly, addresses the key uh, criticisms of that Bloomberg plan. So we feel like we've come up with a plan that frankly is much more fair and really reflects uh, literally thousands of conversations that we've had across the region over the last four years. We've been patient and, we've, and the whole idea is to slowly build support and comfort with this idea and, un, and get, to get folks to understand, as Nicole does, that this kind of thing is inevitable here in New York. Yeah, though that's actually what I wanted to ask you about because Nicole does argue that it's inevitable and she says that it, it's, it, it's essential that we take a proactive uh, approach to it because we can use the revenue in a, in a wiser manner than if we are doing it as, as a, a Band-Aid and that we find ourselves you know, we, we all know that we're facing massive shortfalls in transportation funding, right. and uh, otherwise we will find ourselves on, on our heels. Um, do you agree with that assessment? And, and what is the time frame for implementing this, this plan for you? Yeah, I absolutely agree with Nicole. And just to summarize some of her, her, her reasoning behind that, 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 that view, is A, if you wait until your roads and bridges and transit system are in increasing states of disrepair, it's just that much more expensive to fix this stuff uh, down the road. It's always more uh, affordable and uh, a better investment to, uh, to, to spend the money on, on maintaining and um, preventative uh, maintenance, if you will. Uh, and secondly, we're already paying an enormous amount. I mean, I think something nearly 20 cents of every dollar that we pay in fares and tolls doesn't go to to rehabilitating that same system that we're relying on and that we're paying for, it actually goes to banks in the form of uh, you know interest on debt. So it's not a productive use of our fare and toll money. Uh, and if we continue to just issue more and more debt uh, and kick this can down the road, it just means that that debt's going to go up. And that means a couple of things. One, less and less of our money is going to productive use and to, and to reinvesting in the system. And secondly, it means much higher fare and toll increases than we're already seeing. Right now, the MTA has proposed a 4% across the board increase in, I guess, March of 2015, coming up pretty soon. 
the state controller, Tom DiNapoli, issued a report about a month ago saying, if we have to fill that MTA budget gap, which is about $15 billion, with more debt, we're looking at 15% increases in fares and tolls instead of just four. That's a four times increase, and I don't think that New York City's uh, residents and, and workers uh, can afford it or stomach it. And so, you know, it really is a simple proposition, which is we either have to find a new source of revenue, like the Move New York plan or something else, or we're probably looking at either underfunding our roads and bridges, and I think everybody agrees that's a bad idea, or we're looking at having to issue more debt, which means much, much higher fares and tolls for those who are already paying. You know, as the campaign director, is this something that you are trying to get passed by the legislature this upcoming session, or is it uh, you're taking a longer view to trying to implement it? No, Morgan, we've already taken a pretty long view. We set out to do this in 2010, and even back in 2010, our sights were set on the uh, beginning of 2015, because we knew, you know, no one wants to impose on themselves a new, uh, a new user fee if they don't have to, and certainly elected officials don't want to be in the, in the position of doing that unless there's some perceived crisis or need. And I would argue that there is a crisis and need, and it's being reflected in the fact that the MTA has just recently proposed its next five-year capital plan, uh, and it's $32 billion, and they're $15 billion short. And if we don't make those investments, I think New Yorkers are going to be paying for it for a long time. So we've always uh, tried to position ourselves uh, to be the answer, the best answer, we hope, as to how the MTA can fill that, uh, that, that capital plan budget gap. And likewise, on the DOT side, the New York uh, State and New York City DOT are also facing uh, a financial uh, crisis. Uh, and they don't have an obvious answer for where they're going to get this funding, and we could provide uh, that answer too, at least for downstate. Does the MOVE New York plan also entail any investment from the state in order to get started, or is it purely additive re revenue? Well, it has to be additive revenue, and we want to make that very clear. This, the idea is not to raise this, some additional new revenue so we can uh, you know, raid or, or, or divert some of the existing dedicated uh, revenue streams for the MTA. All of those have to be preserved and intact. And frankly, there's a, there's a lot of support for this idea around the region that we're finding. The one uh, the issue that people have in common is the concern of how do we know that this money will be preserved and actually will go into investing in our transportation system? How do we know also that there won't be a robbing Peter to pay Paul situation where the state decides, oh, well, you've got some new revenue here, so we're going to take some of this other revenue? And the answer is we've been dealing with some terrific experts on this who have been working with the MTA and finances for a long time, and the answer is pretty straightforward, which is you have to bond this revenue. But there's some kind of inherent safeguards, which is when the MTA tolls, that money comes directly to the MTA. It doesn't go through the legislature. It doesn't have to be appropriated. So that money can be safeguarded. Uh, you're also going to have to issue new bonds, uh, both to protect existing uh, bondholders who are going to see a reduction in some of the revenue on the outer uh, uh, tolls. So you have to bond that revenue to make sure that they're made whole, and that itself makes it impossible for uh, the state to raid those funds or divert those funds. And then I think you'd also have to create some kind of finance authority to make sure that the various sources of funds are uh, consolidated and then distributed back to the MTA and to New York City and New York State DOT. How does it affect your plan that the Republicans have taken an outright majority in the Senate because there are very few Republicans who represent the the uh, the five boroughs and is there an appetite to p pass essentially a, a new tax uh, and uh, from people who don't represent New York City? Yeah. I think that there might be. You know, listen, that's not, it's not easy. Uh, uh, let's, let's be honest about that. But and first I wanted to, to clarify that we don't view this as a tax. We view this as a, as a user fee in the sense that, you know, you, you only pay it when you use those bridges. And listen, we all drive at various times. Some of us drive more often than others, but we all drive at various times, so we're all going to be subjected to this user fee. But you don't have to you know, cross those bridges and, and therefore uh, you don't have to pay the fee, you know, or at least on a regular basis if you don't want to. Um, and and th we feel it's incumbent upon us uh, and the legislature when they ultimately pass legislation to make sure that we invest in uh, filling some of the transit gaps that exist in, some, in, 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 in still too many of our communities, particularly in the outer parts of the city. Uh, so we actually have a five-point plan for how to do that, which I could get into if we have time. Um, but essentially, in, in terms of the Republicans in the suburbs, 
I just had a terrific meeting with a, uh, a Republican uh, senator out on Long Island, and I'm not going to name him at this time, uh, but he understands it. He gets, he gets the plan, he supports the idea, and he understands that if they hope to keep, one of the big issues on Long Island is youth flight, if you will. A lot of young people there are going off to college and they're not coming back to Long Island, they're not helping to create jobs, stimulate the economy, and so on. And one of the reasons that they've cited, because they've done a lot of studies, is that there's just not enough of a viable transportation system out there. And that's what a lot of young people, especially we like is, is mass transit. And he gets this. You don't have to be a Republican or a Democrat to understand the importance of a, a well-invested uh, transportation system uh, to our region. We saw that during Sandy, too, how important a multimodal system is when one leg, if you will, is out. Uh, some of these other systems are working. So I think there can be a lot of support. I've heard a lot of Republican senators in particular talk about the importance in investing in infrastructure. Uh, and so I think there could be a real appetite for this. Um, buses are a, an important part of the Move New York plan as well, right? And I know that just as a native New Yorker, I think that there are many New Yorkers like myself who have this kind of natural bias against mm -hmm. buses in mm -hmm. favor mm -hmm. of subways. And I know that one of my colleagues when I was a journalist out in Queens used to evangelize to me about how incredible the bus system was right. in Queens if only you knew how to navigate it. Right. Um, can you talk about the bus element of it and um, you know whether is that just a function of the fact that the, uh, enhancing the train system is just so um, prohibitively expensive? Yeah, well, let, let me actually use that as an opportunity to talk to you about what we call our five-point plan for making sure that those communities that are underserved by rapid transit uh, have a lot of new options. And I want to make it clear, too, that three or four out of the five that I'm going to list are things that we could actually execute or implement in the next two or three uh, years. Um, and therefore, before any new tolls are imposed. And so, a couple of key points. One, we're not going to we're not going to impose any new tolls unless we simultaneously lower the tolls on the outer crossings, and vice versa, by the way. But we also are not going to impose these tolls until we've started at least made a very good down payment on investing in some of the new transit services that will help meet the needs of those underserved communities, particularly in the outer parts of the city. So the five-point plan. One, continue to, uh, to, to restore some of the bus service and train service that was cut in 2010 by the MTA. Two, invest in Mayor de Blasio's uh, bus rapid transit select bus service uh, plan. That's a terrific plan, there's a lot of support for it, but there isn't an identified funding source, so we could be part of the funding source for that. Uh, three, uh, we want to increase the, the amount of express bus service there is and also bring that, the cost of that service down a little bit. Right now, regular subways and buses cost $2.50 and express bus costs $6. That's a big gap between those two. We would actually drop the fee, the, the fare, down to a $5 fare. So a buck off on express buses, but also deploying more express bus service, including on Staten Island where they badly need it. Uh, and then we would also uh, extend city ticket, which is the MTA program where you get a discount on weekends within the city if you use Metro North or Long Island Railroad, it's about half off. We would extend that to seven days a week. So if you don't happen to live next to a subway, but you do live near uh, Metro North or Long Island Railroad, but the eight or nine dollars it would cost you normally to get into the to the, to the core is prohibitive, we would knock that down to four or five dollars to make it a much more affordable and accessible uh, fare. And then finally, we would, we would be the ones that would help to fund the Penn Access, the four new Metro North stations in the eastern part of the Bronx. And then also we're proposing an, Air, an RPA idea, which is the Tribor RX, which would be a new above ground, below grade uh, subway system that would connect Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx, uh, thus providing folks that live in the non-Manhattan boroughs an alternative way to get between those boroughs where a lot of the new job creation is without having to go all the way into Manhattan first and go back out. So back to the bus question, we think buses are, as you say, a really smart way to be able to extend uh, mass transit service to a lot of underserved uh, communities and to do it in relatively short time with relatively uh, little money. Uh, you know, building new subway systems, particularly underground, does take some time. So we think this is a way we could expand our transit uh, system and service pretty quickly and pretty uh, uh, affordably. And, and lastly, do you have a sense of how the, the public is or, or will respond to the Move New York plan? That's a good question. Uh, we actually just recently commissioned a poll and we've just gotten those back and we're digesting those uh, figures, but we uh, plan to release those to the press and to the public uh, in the next uh, week or two. Uh, and I was very encouraged to see how 
strong the, the support is actually for this idea. Um, I was pleasantly surprised uh, how, how, how positive that support was. Well, you've made us curious to find out the results now. <laughs> good, I'm, good, I'm good. sure teacher, we'll find teacher, them teacher. shortly. Yeah. Um, Alex Matheson from the Blue Marble Project and of course, Move New York. Thank you so much for joining us on City and State TV. Thanks for having me.